Good evening. Welcome to Vespers, and uh, welcome to Music Weekend. This evening's program is titled simply, Seeking Jesus. And I hope tonight you're inspired to seek after him a little more. Uh, let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll get right in with the Wind Symphony. Father in heaven, I ask that you would be present with us as we worship you your Sabbath hours. I pray that your spirit would be here and that you would um, give a special um, blessing to each of our minds that we might uh, come closer to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Tonight I will be reading Luke 2, 8 through 20. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a great multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. Then they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our first song will be, we invite you to use the hymnals tonight. Go back to old fashioned a little bit. Our first song tonight will be number 143, Silent Night. Number 143, Silent Night. First, second, and fourth verse. second song is 124, Away in a Manger. Sweet. 
will be hymn number 121, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Okay, um, now you're going to hear uh, Zach Bejarano is going to play Silent Night, and uh, it's arranged, um, Grub it's a famous piece by Franz Gruber and arranged by Rousseau.
Matthew 1, Matthew 2, 1 through 8. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, all of Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are not the least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had certainly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me, that I might come and worship him also.
I'll be reading in Deuteronomy 4:29. But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. Okay, I'm going to explore the concept of seeking Jesus. Before we do that, let's, um, let's have you guys introduce yourselves, and we'll start with Nathan, and, and uh, why don't you share a favorite Christmas memory or a time you've ever gone seeking for something, and then we'll have prayer after that. So start with Nathan, and we'll work our way down the line. Well, um, my name is Nathan Henderson. Um, I am a senior here at GLA. Um, one of my favorite Christmas memories, I'd say, would be, I mean, you always know of that like, classic, like, it's Christmas Eve, you want to open one present before Christmas because you're an impatient little brat, and uh, <laughs> you just really want to open one present. And there was a couple Christmases where we got to do that, and sometimes we'd go over to our grandparents' house, and uh, we'd have a little Christmas kind of devotional type thing, and we'd open a present, and that was always just kind of, yeah, woo, presents. Um, and times I've gone seeking for things. Well, um, as a human, I tend to lose things sometimes, and therefore have to go and seek for them too many times to count. And I think I'll probably leave it at that. My name is Eliora Bade, and I'm a junior. And my family doesn't really celebrate Christmas. And when I came here to Glide, it was the first time I was able to celebrate Christmas. So I would say that my favorite Christmas memory will be celebrating Christmas here at Glide. Uh, my name is Shaka Ewes, and I'm a sophomore. Uh, my favorite Christmas. Uh, it was when I, I propped the tree in Pasif class. I am Mary Ranville. I'm a freshman. And one of my favorite Christmas memories is uh, I got this like microphone for Christmas. And me and my cousin Gracie were able to, like we started singing for our family. And it was just really fun. Cool. Why don't you? Um... Yes, for those who don't know, I'm Michael Sandvik, and I'm not a student, but the, uh, I mean, I'm all, we're always learning, but anyway, why don't you tell us, uh, if those of you, uh, the three of you, have you ever sought after something? Have you gone seeking for something? you have a little vignette or story about that? Any of you? So I mostly, almost all the time, lose my glasses. And I think that's the main thing that I have to seek for in my life. Uh, for me, it was last year when I lost my keys for three weeks. Uh, I couldn't go to my room and ask the dean to open for my room, but every day, like, 
I, I have to pay five dollars, and yeah, that's what I seek for. Uh, mine would have probably had been coming here to GLA. Um, it just was like, I put my mind to coming here, but it was like everything was pushing it away. Like I felt like there was no way for me to come here, but I just put my mind to it, and I'm here. <laughs> All right, well, why don't we have a word of prayer, and then let's, um, let's dive in. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you so much that you uh, have given us this season to remind us that uh, we can seek after you. And I pray that you would just be, send your spirit with us as we uh, think about um, what that means. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, well, we heard stories of the wise men and the shepherds and how they were seeking for Jesus, seeking for the Messiah. Why do you think, and there's, you don't have to go in any particular, but why do you think the shepherds were so eager to seek after the Messiah? Um, well, uh, so the shepherds were, in all likelihood, they were Jews. They'd probably grown up hearing of stories of the soon-to-come Messiah and like any other, maybe they had some misconceptions about what he would do, but nonetheless, they were probably excited for it. And when a horde of angels come down and sing for you and tell you you should go and seek out the Messiah who has just been born, I mean, who wouldn't be excited? You've been, not even just your whole life, your family tree, every single person since the fall of man has been looking forward to this moment and you get to be there and experience the birth of the person who will save the world and not only that but again there's a choir of angels like i don't know what more to say i think that's reason enough um i was thinking like Nathan said, they were being told of a savior coming to free them from their own pain, suffering, and then they heard of this child that was born and they're like, is this really the Messiah? Like, we really gotta find out and they really wanted to see that child's face. Okay, well, how about the wise men? That one's a little trickier. How about the wise men? Why were they so eager? What do you think? Uh, the wise men were so eager to sing because when they came from, when they saw the stars from heaven, they went to Jerusalem, and uh, people from Jerusalem were doing nothing, and they were, like, they were shocked, and for them, like, they were so happy to see, to seek Jesus, but... After that, like they were wondering, like why, why are they so are they not so happy? I think that's why they were so eager to seek Jesus. Well, um, again, for the wise men, it's a bit different because they, in all likelihood, were not Jews. They probably hadn't grown up hearing stories of a soon-to-come Messiah. Um, for them, it was just a bunch of writings in a book. So when they saw this. Star. They had obviously read the prophecies, but maybe hadn't believed them. Like, if you think about when you read the beliefs of some other religion or some old stories or something, it's not like you necessarily believe it. So when you see the signs coming together and pointing towards something like that, they were obviously curious. But even beyond that, it's kind of hard for me to believe that in those circumstances, that not only were they curious, but they didn't just go and hope that they were there. They brought gifts and stuff. They, they took everything they had. So they clearly believed that he would be there. So, but again, um, I can't really explain it, but God definitely had a hand in it. Yeah, I think it's like they saw that big like star and the wise men, looked at stars for their life. So it was like this huge thing, and they heard, like he said, they heard these stories and stuff, and it was all starting to line up, and I think they got really excited and were curious what was 
leading to the end at that star, so they were so eager to go further with their searching, yeah. Okay, um, you know, I'm reminded of that um, most interesting text says, um, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And um, it's really fascinating to me is, is most of God's people in those days, they didn't believe, they believed that if you weren't genetically of the a descendant of Abraham, you had no hope of salvation. And, um, you know, this text talks about taking by force, like everything was stacked against these men to be, come and grasp salvation and see the Messiah, that, they, that he was be their Messiah, not just the Messiah for the Jews. And, um, uh, and, they, and they were persistent anyway. I wonder, it's a good lesson, I think, for us. Um, what is a benefit you've experienced in seeking after Jesus? Let's make this a little more personal. So when you've sought after Jesus, what's a benefit you've experienced? Okay, so um, I think one benefit of seeking after Jesus, and this is kind of a weird one, it's kind of weird to say this, but in a way, it's almost an unachievable goal. But it's not a goal that is so much out of reach as more that the closer you get to it, the more there is to it. And the more you see, you can never get, you can never quite get to the end goal, but you're always getting closer. And you can always, you're always benefiting from it. So it gives you a goal in life, and it's a goal that will you can follow for your whole life. It's not a goal that once you've completed it, you're like, what do I do now? It's a goal that you can keep going and going and going. And obviously there'll be hiccups and hard times when you feel like maybe you've reached a dead end or maybe even you feel like you reached the goal, but there's always more for you to do. And that's just one benefit that I've personally felt seeking Jesus. I'd say the one benefit that I've seen is miracles and blessings and the protection that God um, provides when you're seeking after him and trying to find him. A benefit for me is once I like started like seeking after God and like wanting to know further him, I started realizing that the people who were like around me the most weren't always the best people, but he started bringing in these people for me that had the same beliefs, the same mindset as me. And it was like really important to me that I wasn't surrounded in, surrounded in all this like hate. It was a huge benefit. Uh, for me, why I seek Jesus is because like he helped me in my life with a lot of stuff. Like he helped me like get away from a country which like there's bad people and which can kill you for no reason. And that's why I think Jesus. This is kind of a tag along question, it, similar, but um, if somebody says, well, that's great for you, but why should I do it? Why would you, what would you tell them? Like, how would you say it's worth it? Why is it worth it? I mean, it's kind of this similar question, but Maybe you just can expound a little bit. Why would you say it's worth it to seek after Jesus? Like, kind of, so like as if you're answering that question for someone else. They're saying, why should I do this? What would you tell them? I'd say because he slowly takes away your, the troubles of the world and it becomes easier, well, not easy, but like, when you get closer to him, life will be simpler for you, even though not really simple, but yet it will still be easier for you. Um, 
I, I think simple answer, short answer, is that, I mean, heaven is a place that, you know, God has prepared for those who follow him. And I had an interesting question asked to the entire class during a Sabbath school once, which was, would you follow God if there was no heavenly reward? And my process of, my thought process was, well, I don't think God could be, God, that's not possible because God in his love gives that to us. And if we were going to go and follow God, it wouldn't be worth it without a reward because it's not an easy life. And if we didn't have that reward, God wouldn't be the God we know and love because he wouldn't be love. I believe that even though seeking after God can make you, like, the stuff you like and the stuff you believe, like, you're really into will start disappearing and, like, you have to give up some of the stuff you're doing and it's really hard, but when you're older and you're reflecting in life, like, about this, you'll realize once you start seeking God, you actually start getting happier and your life just started getting better. But if you kept in your worldly possessions, you would have just stayed in this slump that you've been in. Uh, sometimes in our life, like we try to do something like which can make us feel okay, like with something we do or something we do in our life. Like if you're in Jesus, like or if you want to go with Jesus, like you feel free, like feel okay to do something, and He will bless you and like help you with anything you want. All right. Um, so you kind of maybe you've answered this already to some extent, but let's. Um, it's kind of the third part of this question, really. How has how uh, it's be real, but it's real direct. How has Jesus made a difference in your life? And you, some of you kind of already, kind of already shared that when you were talking about the benefits of walking with Jesus, but. How would you say Jesus has made a difference in your life? So, my family is, were missionaries, and in Morocco, we're missionaries. And where we are, it's kind of hard to be able to preach to everybody who's there. And because of that, like, it was hard for my brother and I to go to school. So we did homeschool, and for three or four years, I think. Yeah, three or four years, and it started getting harder because I didn't have any social life, and I was literally in my room the whole entire day. I did nothing except school. And my parents saw that it wasn't good for me, so they decided to like see another place for me to be able to do school so that I would be able to um, have a social life. And they found GLA, and I'm here. And I've been here for two years now, and I really, really love it. And I think that if God hadn't done anything or if God hadn't brought it up, I would not have been here, and I would still be back there, lonely. Well, for me, first off, I am alive. We are all alive because God, he's the one who keeps us uh, alive every morning. Um, second off, I was born into a place and into a family where I am told about God, where I'm encouraged to care about God, and I'm, it's not hidden from me. It's not frowned upon. So I consider those both massive blessings in the way I ways I have been blessed by Jesus, but also, um, again, going back to the idea, he gives us a goal, and if he gives us a goal, he also gives us a path, so we know where we're going, and maybe we don't always know right what's in front of us, but we know the general kind of pathway, and that's really helpful. It's often, it'd be hard to follow a map if it was just a point, 
And another point, it's like, just, just go there. Um, there's some mountains here that you might have to avoid. We ain't going to tell you how to get around them. So with that little roadmap, even if it's not always the easiest to see, I think that's an, another way that Jesus, that God has made a difference in my life, just given me direction. Uh, for me, uh, I'm thankful for my parents because when I was born as a Christian, and when I was born, there were, there, there were seven Adventists, and like it helped me a lot because like I didn't go to those like private school like other kids. Like I went to private school to private school in my in time of my life. So I thank God for what He has done for me. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things uh, God has done for me is have me have the hard times in my life. Like, there's a lot that's happened in my life that was really hard and hard to go through, but it made me realize that I'm not the only one in this world. Like, I've learned to be kinder to people because I don't know what they're going through, and I feel like God has helped me try to be a person who can outreach to someone else and not just worry about myself. All right, well, that's some inspiring stuff. Um, did you want to say anything? Okay. Um, so I want to turn this discussion now on it, kind of on its head, and we've talked about why it's worth seeking after Jesus. And we see in, you know, we heard in the different scriptures about people seeking Jesus and the definite command seek to seek after Jesus in Deuteronomy 4.29, which was such a good a good thing that it said in the Bible, it says, you'll find him if you seek with all your heart, that they put it in there twice. It's in Jeremiah 29, 13 also. And, um, but now, I want to just think, because we, we think about Jesus and coming to this earth to save us, how did and how does Jesus seek after us? Well, it's, it's getting close to Christmas, and we all know what that means. Uh, Jesus came down here as a human, uh, exposed himself to the devil's attacks, and came down here. Not only did he die for us to save us from our sins, not only did he live on this earth and teach people, but he also left behind uh, uh, this book, which is like, you know, basically the guide to eternal life. And that's pretty cool. And not only that, not only that wasn't enough for him, he also left his Holy, and the Holy Spirit, which he calls the helper with us to help us. We have consciences given up to us by God. There's just so much that he's done to seek us. And like, there's this song that sometimes, not currently because it's not a Christmas song, but sometimes plays in the dorm. Uh, and the main like line is what more could he do and really what hasn't he done to seek for us um i think he seeks for us by like we like knows we have knowledge of God, but knowing God is different. Um, it's very important for us to know God, but sometimes we decide not to. Like there's times in our lives when we're mad at him and we're just like, we don't want anything to do with you. And he reaches out to us. No matter what is going on with us, he either brings someone into our life to draw us closer to him. We might not even notice it, but no matter what is going on, he's the one who's like sneaking into our lives to have us <laughs> seek him. Um, God has done a lot of stuff in our life. Like he died for our sin so that we can be saved and he can take us to heaven when he comes back. But in our lives, we try all the stuff to do, like we can be rich and all stuff, but in, in Jesus, like, we, we have everything. Like, when you go in heaven, there's, there's no killing, like, stealing or do something. Like, we're going to be free. 
God will never give up on us, no matter what we do. Um, I guess I have actually kind of one more thing that I thought of, which is, again, kind of in the theme, but like, um, if you look at this right here, whose idea was it to take a piece of metal, shape it kind of like a cone, and put a little thing inside of it? <laughs> whose idea was it? I mean, personally, like, you see him here being used to help people, you know, get closer to God, and I think that's next, the bells, um, specifically, but I think God might have had something to do with the invention of these, because I know I wouldn't have thought of anything like that, and... Yeah. Well, why don't we close, why don't we close this thought, and I just want to appeal to each one of us um, before the bells come up and play. Let's seek after God with all our hearts. And this time of year, when we're reminded of it, let's remember how God is seeking after us. Um, I want to close just with reading Luke. We've heard it lots of times, but Luke chapter 15, and perhaps uh, one to, verses 1 through 7, and this may be perhaps the you know, Jesus' quintessential parable about seeking after, seeking after us. But it says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost? until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. I just want to invite you just to think how Jesus... He's looking for you. He's looking for you. He's looking for me. And um, he wants us to be with him. And when we choose to come to him, boy, he's excited. Um, let's pray, and then we'll turn the time over to the handbell choir. Gracious Father in heaven, thank you so much that you have sought for us. And thank you that you give us that opportunity to seek for you, and that you've promised that if we search with all our hearts, we will surely find you. I ask that you would bless each person in this room to that end, in Jesus' name, amen. My name is Christiana Green. I direct the Handbell Choir. Um, we'll be playing three songs for you tonight. The first one is From a Distant Home, followed by It Came Upon a Midnight Clear and Ukrainian Bell Carol Fantasy, which is just a fancy title for Carol of the Bells. Um, the second two you're probably more familiar with, but the first one, From a Distant Home, maybe not so much. Um, it's actually a song about the three wise men, well, the wise men who brought three gifts. Um, so I'm just going to read a few of the words for you from um, that song in case you're not familiar with it. So it talks about them coming from a distant home, seeking for the Savior. Um, we've been talking about seeking. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It says, glowing gold, I bring the newborn babe so holy, token of his power to reign above in glory. Frankincense, I bring the child of God's own choosing, token of our prayers to heaven ever rising. Bitter myrrh have I to give the infant Jesus, token of the pain that he will bear to save us. Um, so the wise men were seeking for him. Um, we should be seeking for him um, for many different reasons, but like the song says, we seek um, after him because he's all-powerful. There's much that he can do for us. Um, we seek after him because he answers our prayers. He hears them. Um, and also we seek after him because of the pain he went through and what he did for us to save us. Thank you. 
so Carol of the Bells, we've heard a lot. Um, a lot of time it's instrumental, we don't usually hear the words. And when we do hear the words, we hear like the hark, hear the bells, sweet silver bells, you know, Christmas is here bringing good cheer. Um, but there's other versions. So I want to read to you um, another version that um, is out there. Ring Christmas bells, merrily ring, tell all the world Jesus is king. Loudly proclaim with one accord the happy tale, welcome the Lord. Ring Christmas bells, sound far and near, the birthday of Jesus is here. Herald the news to old and young, tell it to all in every tongue. Ring Christmas bells, toll loud and long, your message sweet, peal and prolong. Come all ye people, join in the singing, repeat the story told by the ringing. Ring Christmas bells throughout the earth, tell the glad news of Jesus' birth. Loudly proclaim with one accord the happy tale, welcome the Lord. Um, so we've been talking about seeking Jesus, but when we find him, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to proclaim it to the world, tell them about the happy story um, that it is when we do find Jesus.
I guess I have prayer. All right, let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us to another day of life. Thank you for bringing everyone here safely. Um, I hope that we were able to reach someone and help them to see you in a new way. I said you would bless us this Sabbath. Please help us to have a restful time. In your name, pray, amen. You're dismissed.